does freedom mean to you? Is Canada a free country? Do you believe in a world free from injustice? How do we honor those who came before us, who saw the world not as it was, but as it could be? When we talk about freedom, for many it is an abstract concept meant to evoke feelings of pride and patriotism. We turn to other places in the world and other points in history to learn about the true cost of freedom, something many Canadians take for granted today. We know it exists just out of sight, and we believe that our freedoms are there permanently should we need them, ready and waiting for the right moment. We must not take these freedoms for granted any longer. We need to recognize our rights and responsibilities, celebrate them, and continue to fight for the freedoms of all Canadians, regardless of race, religion, language, gender, ability, or sexuality in our present and in our future. Friends of Simon Wiesenthal Center for Holocaust Studies is a nonprofit human rights organization that counters racism, anti-Semitism, and promotes the principles of tolerance social justice and Canadian democratic values through advocacy and education. Our programs use lessons drawn from history to foster empathy and to teach young Canadians about the responsibilities of citizenship in a democratic society, lessons that are all too necessary in the world we live in today. We have developed a number of programs, events and workshops to counter anti-Semitism and other forms of intolerance, to foster media literacy and critical thinking skills, promote human rights from a uniquely Canadian perspective. We teach tens of thousands of Canadian students each year from our award-winning Tour for Humanity mobile classroom, to student groups who bear witness to survivor testimony in our equity and diversity workshops, to events like Freedom Day and Speaker's Idol, student-centered programs that inspire and empower youth to be change makers in their schools and communities. We are guided by the words of our namesake, Simon Wiesenthal. Freedom is not a gift from the heavens. You have to fight for it every day of your life. Simon Wiesenthal was an architect, an artist, a writer, a Holocaust survivor, a Nazi hunter. After surviving the horrors of the Holocaust and losing 89 members of his family, he began a lifelong pursuit of justice. More than most, Simon understood the way that hateful ideas and language can lead to outright violence. He believed that for true justice, to make never again a reality for all people, we must recognize education as our best defense against hate and intolerance. Thank you for joining us virtually for a very special Freedom Day. We are excited to kick off the new school year with you. In the following program, you will hear some diverse perspectives on the subject of freedom in Canada, along with ideas about the duties and responsibilities that accompany our democratic freedoms. We are living through chaotic times and these conversations are arguably more important than ever before. Listen as individuals from across Canada share their own unique perspectives on what freedom means and how we can work each day to preserve and protect our freedoms. The meaning of freedom is in a very unusual sense something that's not free. Uh, what I, I mean by that is, is that our ability to speak, to communicate, to live our lives to the fullest, to achieve our ambitions, uh, to feel uh, the presence of, of others beyond our families uh, without any hidden agendas of, or concerns that we're being overwatched and uh, we're not being uh, uh, let uh, free to be able to express ourselves as we want. Uh, that's sort of the, the freedom part. But 
The non-free part is, is that to be able to guarantee that, we do have to commit to actually keeping such a notion alive, such a set of values uh, in place, uh, and that we act uh, according to those values and we hold people accountable uh, when they do not. Freedom is knowing that there is something wrong in the world and that I have the ability to fix it. Freedom is more. Freedom is being able to disagree, to challenge, to take the opposite side to what everyone else believes. What freedom means to me is to fully express yourself, to have no limitations, to be able to express your culture, your language, opinions, and traditions. You shouldn't feel hesitant on expressing yourself. You shouldn't feel like you're gonna have discrimination upon yourself when you're expressing yourself to the fullest. Freedom means that I'm able to live my life as me. And by this, I mean that I'm able to live my life by loving who I want, doing what I want, of course, in legal reasons. I'm able to speak my mind and think my own individual thoughts, that I can live my life happy, healthy, and free. But I also have to remember that because I have freedom doesn't mean that I can live my life hurting other people and infringing on, on their freedom. I think, I think that with freedom, it's really important that we understand our social locations. It's understanding that not everybody has freedom. I could be living a completely different life than somebody else. And for me, that means that I need to do my part in creating a world so that we can all work together towards a better future. To me, freedom is the ability to be who you are without judgment, the ability to be true to yourself and just to be a representative of your own community, to be involved in your community and the communities around you. I think Canada is a free country, but like as an Inuk myself, speaking for the Inuit, we, we feel like we have limitations. We feel like we still have some hesitation. We still have that like feeling that we're hitting a wall. And it's with that financial, financial uh, stability and with our education, we still feel like we have some limitation because our our main our main language is Inuktitut, and it's not treated as an important subject in our school, and it, it is it's very optional. And we still have youth that still are passionate about our culture, but we still can't speak our language. Canada is more free than most countries over the course of history, but Canada has a long way to go. There are many many people who are not free in Canada, the impoverished, the First Nations, people facing homophobia, transphobia, anti-Semitism, anti-Black racism, anti-Indigenous racism. We can be better. Freedom in this country is being able to be respected by all as an equal. That all humans are human. None of us are more than the other. To many people, Canada is an amazingly free place, but to many others, Canada isn't. I think that there's a lot of privilege that goes behind certain people's definitions and perceptions onto freedom. And with many communities, especially uh, the indigenous communities, black communities within Canada, there are certain aspects of freedom that just aren't available. So until all Canadians are free, I personally would say Canada is not a free nation. I think that people would would say that Canada is a free country. And I think that it sort of is, unless you're indigenous, but I think it's also important to remember that it's not just indigenous people, other people feel this way as well, like people of color, people with disabilities. I think it all comes down to who you are, or where you were raised or what your upbringing was. I know that I can only speak for myself and not the entire indigenous population of Canada, but there are times where I, as an indigenous woman, I'm afraid to leave my house. I'm afraid that if I go missing or if I'm murdered, it'll be dismissed. And that's a scary thought as a 20 year old. I'm afraid that eventually if I have kids, they're gonna be taken away at birth. I think that many Canadians feel like we have total freedom, 
but it's just I feel like it's always important to remember that it won't always apply to everyone. As an Anishinaabe Kwe, I don't always feel safe enough to walk outside at night. I have to be careful of what I say all the time. If I'm having these fears, am I really free? Because these aren't irrational fears that I have. These things happen every day in Canada. Do I really have freedom? A world free from injustice is possible. Yes, I really believe that the advancement of human rights, the consciousness that all humans are equal, and that we can soon communicate with the whole of humanity. Imagine with the electronic means that are coming out now, we'll be able to Skype real time anybody in the world. That means that we could be made aware immediately when such abuses happen. We can collectively coalesce to take it on, to, to fight it, to uh, stop it right in its tracks to prevent it from happening. I personally believe that if all of us, no matter who we are, no matter what we're doing, do everything that we can to fight injustices wherever we see it, a world without injustice is very close. A just world is within our reach. I do believe from the bottom of my heart that one day we'll have a world free from injustice. I believe that with the power of positivity, alignment and connecting with one another, talking about our problems in our communities, talking about how we could have a bright future together with a, with a peaceful world. I believe that if we all connected and rebuild this world with unity, working as a team, discussing it, I believe that we will have a world free from injustice. We honor those who came before us who fought for freedom by continuing their fight. It is not enough to commemorate those who fought for freedom, to celebrate them. We must continue their fight. Their torch is passed down to us and we must pass it on to the next generation. How, like how we as Inui honor our people, we honor our elders because those are the people who brought us to where we are today with our culture and our language and our traditions. We honor them with traditional foods such as uh, seal and caribou because they, they, those are the traditional foods we hunt today. And we show them our gratitude and our appreciation of their wisdom and their efforts in passing on our culture, our lifestyles from generation and on and on throughout these past decades. We honor those who came before us by remembering and honoring the work that they've done. Whether it was the military who fought for our safety and freedom or activists like Jeanette Laval who fought for indigenous women's rights. We honor these people in different ways every year. We honor them at Remembrance Day ceremonies that happen across Canada in school and outside of school. We take our time out to sit in silence to remember those who fought for us and for those who didn't make it home. We honor activists by acknowledging the work that they do and how we can support them. We listen to them and become an ally. There are so many things that we can do in this world, big and small, to pay our respects to these people. And I think uh, how we recognize, thank, pray for what they did in the past to give us what we have today is by, in fact, keeping them in our mind as we are moving our own objectives, our own challenges to freedom today. There is a responsibility for us in this nation to humanity to go beyond our borders. We must resolve some of the internal frictions that we have with our First Nations and Aboriginal people. Of course, we must destroy these concepts, these ideas of racism that exist. Our responsibilities right now living in Canada is to grow, build, and connect with one another, to still express ourselves and to still 
strive and push for that diversity that Canada pushes for. And my responsibility as an Inu for the Inuit is to grow and adapt with my culture, to keep pushing for my lifestyle, to keep pushing for my language, to keep pushing for my culture, just everything that surrounds it, is to keep growing and learning every single day and to pa pass it on to the next generation and on. That's my job, to keep passing it on to the next generation that's, that are coming. Our responsibilities as far as fighting for freedoms and protecting freedoms are really our everyday actions. Every single day when we go out there into the world, there's going to be a high chance that we hear something that goes against something we believe in, that we hear something that goes against our communities, really, goes against any community, whether we're part of it or not. We hear racial slurs, we hear sexist jokes, and it's our responsibility to A, not encourage those, but B, to confront those and say why we as people can't accept it and why we need to move past it. In the end of the day, racism, sexism, homophobia, all of it, we need to move past it. There are two things that we can do in our day-to-day -day lives that can help strive for freedom. We should use our voice. Our voice is so powerful on its own, but also adding our voices together collectively will make us stronger and louder. We need to use our voice to bring awareness for the things that are wrong within the system. For example, we need to speak up about the lack of health care or the lack of mental health care. We need to speak up and raise awareness towards racism and discrimination. We can help to combat these things by calling your local politicians, spreading awareness on your own social media, which can simply mean reposting something on your Instagram story. Sign petitions and if you can, donate to grassroots organizations. Secondly, I think it's incredibly important that we take the time out and listen to these people, listen to the populations that we're fighting for. Don't just listen to listen, but listen to understand. Let them tell their story. Take the time out to read, listen, or watch. I think that I think that together we need to stand up against discrimination. I think that we need to come together as one to make positive and impactful changes in the world. I think that we need to help lift each other up. Our responsibility is to have the tough conversations, the Friday night meals, the conversations with family members, the ones where we want to fight for justice, but it's hard. Each of us have a responsibility to have those difficult conversations with those we love, with our family, with our friends. We must fight for justice, even within the walls of our own home. We must keep an eye, and we can, because of what we are as a great nation, keep an eye out beyond our borders. And in doing that, move the plight of others in humanity. So what we can do on our daily lives to strive for freedom is to relate to everybody around us, to get out there and go to talk to people of different cultures and different lifestyles, to get out there and just talk it out and relate. For example, me as an Inuk, I should be able to relate to someone who has loss in culture, someone like such as like someone from Ontario who has culture loss and experience that as well. I should be able to have a conversation with someone and not have to argue. We should just be able to have a great conversation, just talking out our problems, what we have and our ideas and just connect with our communities as well. And this could eventually grow into something global possibly. Like not only Canada, it could just grow all around the world. And that's what I'm just saying, is that you have to relate to people around you so you can connect on a stronger, on a stronger and another personal level. The most important thing that each of us must do is to educate ourselves and to help educate others. If we do not know about the struggles and pain that different communities face, then we cannot take that first step in fighting it. Our responsibilities as people living in Canada are to help foster and build relationships with the original people of this land 
Indigenous people. The history between Canada and Indigenous people is long and gruesome, and it continues to this day with broken promises. There's no consultation. Indigenous women and girls are going missing and murdered at alarming rates across Canada. Indigenous children make up for a vast majority of the welfare system, um, otherwise known as the millennial scoop. I think it's also important to remember that it's not just about Indigenous people, it's it's also making the world, Canada, a better place for all people of colour across the board, making sure that they feel safe and welcome here in Canada as well. And not only that, but we have a huge responsibility to our planet. Here in Canada, we have, it's so beautiful. There's so many parks, there's so many natural wonders. With all these things, we have to keep them healthy and beautiful. If we continue to destroy our planet, destroy like where we live, what does that say about us as humans? In the end of the day, the bottom line is that we need to treat others the way we want to be treated. And even when they're not in the room, we need to be sure that no matter what it is that we're saying, what it is our friends are saying, what we laugh at, that it's something that if that person or people hear it, they wouldn't go away feeling upset. I essentially believe that we're in a nation that is screaming for us to be activists. Start your own movement. Look at what's coming down the road from environment to the sort of subtle increases we see in, in, in different elements of racism and abuses of different groups, be it ethnic or religious or so on. And by engaging you and those around you into political processes, into working in advancing communities and beliefs and understanding and listening and talking real time, you will change the world. Yeah. All of our speakers have worked to make our world a better place. Every day, Canadians like you are defining what freedom means and applying it to their own lives and communities. What does freedom mean to you? Freedom to me means so many different things, uh, but most importantly, freedom is equality. And it should be that for all 8 billion of us humans here on planet Earth. Freedom is having the chance to learn and to grow and learn especially from people who may look different for me or speak differently or come from different parts of the world but ultimately we have the freedom to talk about our ideas and find some common ground. Freedom is the most important aspiration for human beings, especially those who are constrained, persecuted, or oppressed. Freedom is being able to raise your voice and take a stand against hate and intolerance forever they rear their ugly head. It's about making clear that discrimination against a person's skin color, who they choose to love, their religion, or about the decisions they make about their own body has no place in our country. 
In times of uncertainty and fear, we must remember that we are stronger when we work together. It is up to all of us to build on legacies of courageous individuals, like Simon Wiesenthal, who sought liberty and justice, not for the few, but for the many. The bold who believed in themselves and believed in others. The tireless who shed the chains of apathy and spoke the truth to power. Those who fought, those who died, and those who persevered despite the insurmountable obstacles standing before them. We have a responsibility to ensure the freedoms we possess today exist for those who come after us. We are guided by the words of our namesake, Simon Wiesenthal. Freedom is not a gift from heaven. You have to fight for it every day of your life. And if not you, then who?